Just concentrate a little bit more upon the significance and the difference that Jesus Christ uh, makes and what it actually means in in real life to us. Because I, I do think we don't actually realize the ongoing significance of what the cross and resurrection actually mean for us. We, we sort of have an understanding that because of the cross and resurrection, when I die, it'll mean I get into heaven and that's great. And that's true and that's wonderful and that's what we, we are excited about today. But actually, the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ makes a, a difference to us as we live through our lives at this point right now. I think we treat our or, or we treat the, the cross and the resurrection of Jesus in the same sort of way that we might have a relationship with our passports. Um, you know, right now you're not really conscious of where your passport is or where it's hanging around the house because we're, you're not going anywhere, are you? Um, you're not going to be going on holiday probably to 2025. So, so, so there's nothing to urgently need a passport for. So you're not conscious of it. And in the same way, when it comes to the resurrection of Jesus, we're not conscious of it. I think when I die, I'm going to need it. I'm going to get to heaven. But right now, it really doesn't make much difference to me. Now, this whole thing about passports is that it became really important to me a little while ago, just how significant that thing really is. Now, I'm going to tell a story. I apologize if I've told the story before, um, but in that year and a half when I was sort of away from the congregation acting in moderator, a lot of things happened in my life, and, and some of the things I, I've told you and some of the things I haven't, and I've, and I've forgotten what I have and what I haven't told you. And at this point, I'm really glad that the family are in the, the main church hall and that I can tell this story anyway. Um, but really early on in, in that time, we've been away on holiday, and we were going on holiday to Boston, and we had navigated the Dublin to London leg of that, and we were changing planes and getting on a plane to take us to Boston. And at the end of that flight, as we were getting off, and it was relatively late, and it was the last flight into the, into the airport, and as we're walking down the, the aisle, and I don't know about you, but I am the passport holder for everybody. You know when you go onto the plane, you pass your passports, and then there's one designated person who carries them for everybody. I'm that person. As I'm walking down the aisle, I then whisper reassuringly to Nora, there's only four here. Recognizing, of course, there's five of us. And I sort of count and count and count, and there's definitely only four. And as we get off the plane, I again reassuringly whisper to Nora, because by this point, I have understood and I have un I've looked through whose is missing. It's not mine, so I'm happy. <laughs> it's Nora's that's missing. So I say to her, you know, they're going to send you home. Uh, we get off and we do hang around for an inordinate length of time and we're stuck in a wee security room, so we really do feel like illegal immigrants. And eventually, we're permitted to stay. But the guy says, I can let you into the country. I can't get you out. So that night, now about midnight, going into the hotel, we book an appointment at the British consulate in Boston the next afternoon. And when we get to the consulate, we're in, again, a tiny, tiny little room. But to the back of us, I mean, probably about the size of that screen up there, is a giant picture of Her Majesty the Queen. And in those moments when you realize that you're sitting beside someone who is likely to be an illegal immigrant in a few moments, the fact that you can turn to someone like Her Majesty and what it says in your passport that she guarantees that her government will look after you, you're really thankful that we have that. And, 
They were able, thankfully, as we flung ourselves upon the mercy of Queen Elizabeth and her government that she was able to get us a temporary passport to get Nora home again. But again, we think about just what a passport is and you never really think how much you really need it. And with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we don't often think how much we actually need and understand. It's not simply an insurance policy for when we die, but it is something that makes a difference to our lives as we go through. And as I'm getting ready for today, or not even simply getting ready for today, it's a question that I've been having, and I've been asking myself, what difference does believing the resurrection actually make to me? Why should my life be any way different from anybody else who doesn't believe about Jesus? But if I believe that the resurrection of Jesus Christ really happened, what difference is that really going to make? And Paul had an understanding as he wrote about it. And because Paul believed it so vehemently and it was so strong, his whole life was completely changed. And there's a couple of very obvious implications, I think, that we can draw out believing in the resurrection of Jesus. Maybe the first slide that's going, or next slide that's going to come up. And I think if you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then I think you can enjoy life. And you can enjoy what life gives to you. You can enjoy what this world of ours affords. But you also have an understanding that there is more. There is something that is even better that is coming. So in real terms, you can enjoy today chocolate. Because that's a good thing that this world affords. Another thing... Literally in a few weeks from now, or maybe months, but hopefully in a few weeks from now, you'll be able to go to a real coffee shop and you'll be able to sit down in that coffee shop and you'll be able to sit down with other people and you'll be able to have a coffee and a wee bun. And and that will be wonderful and that will be great and that will be a, a wonderful thing that you're able to enjoy. And it is right that you are able to enjoy the good things that this world affords. But we also must realize that the best, is still yet to come. You know, Paul, when he was writing about that, he says, you know, if you do not believe in this, then you may as well just eat, drink, and be merry. And that's true. If you do not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then you may just try your best to get the most out of life. But if you do believe in the resurrection of Jesus and you understand how significant that it really is, then my question to you today is, are you living as if it really makes a difference? Are you living in the light of the gospel, understanding that this really changes your life so much? Are you living in a way that if it were to turn out Not that it will, but if it were to turn out that the resurrection of Jesus was false and that there is no afterlife, then you should be living in such a way now, believing that, that if the the opposite turned out to be true, then your life would be wasted. That's how you are to live, believing in Jesus Christ. But I do say that for the vast majority of us here, we, we, of course, we believe in the resurrection. Most of us here probably do. But at the same time, I think we still live as practical atheists because it doesn't really impact our day-to-day living in the way that it does. You know, you say you believe in the resurrection of Jesus, but you still trust in money. You say you believe and you trust in Jesus Christ, but you still worry about X, Y, and Z. You still Say you trust in in the resurrection and you trust in God, but you still pursue happiness in so many other areas and facets of life. You still say you believe and you trust in God, but you do not really believe that God can change you right now. But God, by his resurrection, enables you 
to really live in a way that is different, to a way that lives in a sacrificial way that you can pour out your efforts in, in service of the kingdom of God that really makes a difference. You can live with an understanding of the resurrection of Jesus, knowing that actually you can now encounter suffering and disappointment and grief, and you can look beyond these things because you can cope with what is thrown at you in life because you are trusting in a better and a wonderful future because of Jesus. And even at times when you don't get everything that you would want, and there are many good things that you would like to have but you can't have, you can still cope with that. And even when you get things that are good and wonderful, you don't spend all your time worrying then that you're going to lose them because you're actually looking to something that's even better and greater. And so if right now we can enjoy what God gives us, but we also realize the best is yet to come. That's one implication. The second implication, where the next slide's going to show it, is that actually what we understand about the resurrection of Jesus because of this is that God is with us in everything. You know, when Jesus uh, came back from the dead and he spent that, those 40 days and he was with his disciples again and he made various appearances, before he ascended back to heaven, one of the last things that he said is, I'm going to give you a comforter. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to be with you. And the Holy Spirit is going to help you. And that is the confidence that we have today. That we really have this Holy Spirit living within us. This same power, the power with which Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, this resurrection power is in each and every believer. You know, it, it wasn't the stone that, that uh, kept Jesus in the tomb, and it's not the soldiers who kept Jesus in the tomb. It's not even the weight of our sin that kept Jesus in the tomb. It's not even the, the whole array of the, what hell could throw against Jesus that kept him in the tomb, but what he died for, of course, was our sin. And the only thing that could bring him back from dead was this resurrection power of God himself. And that same power, Paul says, is working in each of us. And not only right now is Jesus working in us, but Jesus is praying for you. In heaven right now, there is a man called Jesus, and he is praying for you as you go through life. So right now, whatever is happening to you, whatever is preying upon your mind, whatever you are struggling with, you do not go through that unobserved. Jesus Christ is with us in our struggles and in our weakness. He is beside us in our loneliness. In the midst of our temptations, Jesus is drawing alongside. We have a constant friend who has promised not to leave us. So as we look at our lives and we understand what is happening to us, there may be someone here today who needs this special encouragement that Jesus Christ is with you and that Jesus Christ, not only is he with you, but he is standing in heaven and he is praying for you. And so this resurrection of Jesus, it really does change things. That's why Paul, when he's writing about it, and summarizing his life, he says, for to me, well, to live, I can enjoy that. And dying, that is by far the better because I get to be with Jesus. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And that's the challenge about how we live. This is how this passage we've tangentially looked at this morning from Luke's gospel about this resurrection of Jesus. That this might encourage you because it changes everything. If this is true, then our lives must be changed. And I don't, I, I pray that you know and you understand this significance of Jesus and that you have surrendered your life to Christ and you understand that, and that this resurrection of Jesus will afford you heaven. But there may be some among us who have actually never fully grasped hold of that. 
And as you think about that, I want Jesus to become more real and meaningful to you so that you do not just think of this in the abstract, but this is for you. This is something Jesus did for you. And he calls you to himself because he died for you, that you might enjoy the fullness of life. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for the hope, the hope of resurrection, the difference that this makes in our lives and our situation. Lord, change us. That we would be a hopeful community. That we would be a forgiving community. That we would be a people who are fixated upon Jesus. Lord, give us joy this day, a joy that is in Jesus. Help us, Lord, to see Jesus ever more clearly. Amen.